Hi. Oh my god, what a morning. It's been one heck of a morning. I tried to do this this morning twice and it didn't work. So, and my sermon t title today is called um, Get a Room. <laughs> um, I was thinking this morning about what the Lord wanted me to say and all he kept saying is I want you to exp explain true worship and the best way I could explain true worship is that when you think of the sexual act between a man and his wife this holy union um, the the thing that the aspect of sex that really creates things is when um, you um, the man and the woman come together and what's inside of both of them come together to create new life and the Lord is saying that he wants what's inside of you um, and what's inside of him to come together to create new life um, I spoke about this a few weeks ago when I was talking about um, worship and how it was um, how it was very uh, how we in church just go to the tip of worship and then we stop and then we don't really create anything because we don't go to that deep worship we stay on the surface and the Lord wants me to go over this again. I'm not sure why. He just won't leave me alone when it comes to true worship. When it comes to, um, it talks about true worship in John 4, after talking about the moon and the well. See, he says um, that all, all may come and worship him or something like that. Those are his set. Those are like the sentiments. Um, he's longing for true worship. He wants to create things in your life, but the thing that is stopping you is just, um, just um. Um, a lack of real connection and a lot of people are afraid to really connect with God because connect real connection is scary and um, it's scary because you're vulnerable and vulnerability is scary because you could get hurt and we always say that he will never leave us or forsake us or or hurt us or whatever but i think internally deep inside sometimes we think that maybe god will would hurt us um because of what what other people have done in our lives and we know that god is not a person but we're because of our ex experience, experience can sometimes be the best teacher or the worst teacher. And in this case, it is the worst teacher. Because depending on our experience with people, we translate that to God. So if people have heard us, uh, we just think, think, internally that God will hurt us we never say that but 
we think it, we think, what if God hurts me too, and we hear all these things that God takes you through things to make you better, to make you stronger, to give, um, to, to make you build spiritual muscle, um, and all that is true, all that make, uh, all that is true, it's, it's, all these things are, are causing a brighter day, but when you're going through them, when you're going through the hurt and when you're going through the pain, it just doesn't feel like that. It just doesn't feel like it's ever going to end sometimes. And sometimes I think intimacy with people and intimacy with God is so hard for people because we, we are fragile creatures. And then if um, we, if we get hurt, it's, it's sometimes hard to pick ourselves up again. And the Lord is saying that he understands all of that. He understands how hard it is for you. He understands um, how hard it is for you to trust him and how hard it is for you to truly worship him, to give him it all, to do the doubt and dirty worship like um, beyond the surface worship because um, you're afraid of getting hurt. And some of you feel that you've already been hurt by God. So why would I give myself in worship and, and praise to somebody who has hurt me, to somebody who took my son, to somebody who um, caused my husband to walk out on me, or caused, caused my wife to... Um, cheat on me? Why would I give myself to someone who's, who, who, if he doesn't cause it, but allows it, why would I give myself, myself to someone who allows evil, even if he doesn't cause it, like preachers say? Be, because he wants to give himself to you. He wants to give himself to you. And I know it's hard. And we often, we often uh, try, try to be so positive to people when they're hurting, but we don't respect the fact that uh, vulnerability and worship and with people is hard and it's a lot to get through but the Lord said if you would just take it one step at a time he's he's saying right now you don't even have to trust me all the way you don't even have to love me all the way just give me a shot Let's take it one step at a time, and we'll work through it together. Any relationship needs to be able to work through any marriage, any boyfriend, girlfriend relationship, any, any relationship at all, any friendship takes just a bit of working through. And sometimes the working through is tough. And so we, we have told people a lot of stuff that is not true. We say, just trust God. We say, just love God. Like, we say, um, if you love Jesus, just honk your horn and stuff like that but not really realizing that 
some people have been so hurt um, by things that have happened in their lives. And some people have been uh, so hurt, they feel by God that there's a block there. And trust takes time. So if trust with somebody I see takes time, why do we think that we say, oh, just trust God, and it doesn't take any time? Like, we're just, we just have told people just to put their lives in the hands of someone they can't see, and, like, it'll just happen like that. No, it won't. And he say, God is saying right now, he's saying, I know you don't trust me. I know this is hard. I know you don't love me right now. I know you're peeved at me. But just take one step. You don't even have to have faith. You don't even have to have trust. All you have to do is take one step. And he's saying, what do you have to lose? You've lost everything anyhow. Everybody's mad at you anyway. So why not just give me a shot? And I will show you who, who I am. And basically... Um, and then once he shows you who he is, um, your rhythm will develop, your worship will develop, um, everything will develop through, through, your, through your own individual process. And he will send people around you sometimes, he will uh, do it in solitary um, uh, for a time, and sometimes he will send people out around you to help you in your walk. Um, sometimes trusting God is not easy, and he will say, I know you don't trust me, I know you don't even love me right now, but just take it one step at a time. One moment at a time, one second at a time, one moment at a time, one day at a time, one week at a time, one year at a time. Just, just, just put your, just put your hands in the hand of someone who loves you. Even if you're not sure, even if you don't trust him or love him anymore because he's, he in your mind has disappointed you to the, to the nth degree. And your hurt, your pain is okay. Your questions are okay. Everything you're feeling is okay. Just let the Lord take you through a process. I know it's hard. I know you feel like, why do I trust someone who's taken so much from me? My, my answer to that would be, what have you got to lose? You've got nothing else to lose and everything to gain. And he will show you who he is. Sometimes we try and tell people, oh, trust God, love God, you know, all that stuff. And sometimes people are not in that place yet. We just need to let people take their time into trusting and loving and forgiving and stuff.
we want people to do it right away. And But what we need to understand is everybody's process is different. And we really need to, as the church, respect people's different processes. Respect the process that God is taking a person through. And if he calls you to walk with a person in their process, that's fine. But if he doesn't, stay out of it. Because your your good intentions may make a mess of somebody's life. And you don't want that. The Lord wants me to say, He's with you. He loves you despite it all. And there is nothing that He can't do for you. There's nothing that He won't do for you. All you have to do is take that little step. Take his hand, even if you don't fully trust him and love him yet. Even if you don't know if this is going to work. He's saying right now, give, give me a shot. You've given everything else a shot and everything else has failed. So why not give me a shot? Let me prove to you that I am God. Let me prove to you that I can be your provider. Let me prove to you that I can be your comfort. Let me prove to you that I can sustain you. Let me, let me prove to you that I can take you out as, as pure gold. Let me go beyond your pastor's sermons. Let me show you who I am. And he's dying to have a real relationship with you. Have real intimacy with you. And the thing with intimacy is real intimacy doesn't happen in the church when you say, Hallelujah and whatever. That's public affection. That's like when a, um, a husband and wife or a couple kiss when they're like in public. Just a quick peck. But he wants more than a quick peck. He wants it all. He wants the, the down and dirty worship. He wants the ugly cry worship. He wants the worship where you surrender all, where you're, uh, where you're totally naked and just giving, giving him everything. Let him touch you in the broken places. Let his touch heal you. Let his touch restore you. But to get there, to get to that kind of worship, um, you just need to start with the little step. And if you're not sure he's saying that's okay, he's saying give it a shot. If it doesn't work, you won't be any worse off than you are now. It can only get better from here. And he wants you to give him a shot. Because he, despite it all, despite what it looks like, loves you to pieces. He wants to show you parts of himself that no one has ever seen. He wants to share with you um, his vulnerability. <laughs> He's telling me something right now that is totally unbelievable. But he, but the Lord wants to be vulnerable with you. Wants, you, wants to share his thoughts with you his understanding with you. He wants to reveal in his word and through his voice just uh, some of the mysteries of of himself to you. 
He wants to be close to you as you want to be close to him. And real intimacy with God um, breeds, enables real intimacy with yourself. And, and real intimacy with yourself enables real intimacy with your friends and your family and the people in your life. Maybe why you don't have real intimacy with the people in your life is because you don't have real intimacy with yourself. Maybe if you don't have real intimacy with yourself, you, you, you have trouble with intimacy with God. So you start with intimacy with God and then it trickles down to you and then it trickles down to everyone in your life. So, because real intimacy can only bear fruit um, if you let it. Look, you can't hold back in intimacy and expect to bear fruit. You can't have children without having sex. You can't have natural children without having sex. So, so in the natural, so in the spiritual. So guys, I will see you later. Bye. I forgot to say hello. Sorry, I just jumped right into the server today. Hello. I hope you guys are doing great today. Thank you so much. Take care. And then, one, one more thing I have to say. When you have real intimacy with God, you'll understand what they mean by worship being a weapon. You'll understand why worship is so important. But without real intimacy with God, uh, your worship will seem hollow. It's like um, a husband and a wife without real knowing of your husband or your wife, um, the intimacy is not real. You, you could even, you could even, uh, have sex and it not be real and not feel any connection. Just let it be a physical thing. And then, but, and then you could have not, not be married and not be having sex at all and have real intimacy with a person. Real, um, sexual intimacy is first about connection, not about, uh, the physical aspects of the sexual act, that's part of it, of course, but it is first about connection. So is spiritual intimacy. It is first about connection, not about raising your head or whatever, because you can go through the physical motions. You can raise your hands when the worship leader says, raise your raise your hands, you can do all of that when the worship leader says to do all of that, but it doesn't mean you have a real connection with God, it means you're raising your hands and jumping around, and that's awesome, but the connection 
has to come along with that. And he wants real connection with you. Tonight. Today. So thank you guys for um, being with me and watching this. It's been a real, real treat to be with you as usual. I'll see you next week. Earth, it was fragrance. Then I turned to fire. What if it my weapon? That's how I won my battle. First it was fragrance. Then I turned to fire. Worship is my weapon. That's how I win my battle. This is how I win, win, and win. This is how I win. This is how I win, win, and win. This is how I win. First it was fragrance. Then I turned the fire. Worship is my weapon. That's how I win my battle. This is how I win, win, and win. This is how I win. This is how I win, win, and win. This is how I win.